I'm just going to um, just, just pinpoint some things that the Lord, you know, has put on my heart. And it's all about connecting. Amen? It's all about connecting. So in, in um, 2019, um, I happened to be part of um, the men who went to venture. That was really great to be at Venture 2019. Uh, we had so much fun. I connected with most guys, you know, um, at the event. I made some very good friends. Um, but there's something that happened. That was my highlight for uh, Venture 2019. We, had, we went for paintballing. Paintballing. That was my first time ever going for a paintballing. And I remember I was in Reg's team. And um, Francis was in uh, Dumo's team. And um, before we got in there, um, the guy took us through, you know, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, how we're going to shoot ourselves. And um, we, <laughs> our leaders, after what a guy told us, had to, um, you know, take us to the side and have a strategy. Because like a castle... And we were, we were to take the castle whilst Dumo's uh, guys were protecting the castle. So we needed a plan. And Reg took us through the plan. That you know what? I'm going to go in, but I need you guys to have my back. And that is the title of my sermon this morning. I've got your back. So we go in, and Reg was going to just, you know, charge to the castle whilst we look on the sides and shoot anyone that is trying to stop him. And I targeted Francis. I knew Francis was hiding behind a tree somewhere. And that was my target. I kept shooting at Francis. Like, he was just screaming. I'm like, you are not getting right down because I've got his back. And this is a strategy that... Um, you know, years past, you know, was for a combat. When the, the, um, uh, the, the, the military went for a fight, they always have one person charging forward and the rest of the team watching their backs. And I believe that is how God has made us. To connect. To have each other's back. Are we a church? And that's what I'm going to tell you about this morning. So we go into Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And the verse 26. I'm going to read from the screen. It said, that God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along. So God created mankind, his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. That was God's plan for us. He made us. He made mankind. He said, let us. God started from verse 1, day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6. He said, let us. God is a community. God is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is God in one. He's able to take himself out of himself and speak to himself. Amen. He took himself out of, from himself and came on earth and he would tell the disciples, I'm going uh, to the top of the mountain to pray to my father. God was able to do that because he's God. He's almighty. He's the creator of all things. Amen. And he said, let us make man like us. Let us make man like us. So he made man. We see the, 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 the verse 26 saying that God made mankind. In Genesis chapter 2, which I wanted to read it and, um, to help but the point, he said, the Lord God said, can we read together? The Lord 
God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. I want us to stop there because I know we're going to go into E and all that. And that's not what I'm looking for. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. Now remember in chapter 1, day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, day 7, he said, and God did what? Rested. But in chapter 2, it looks like something happened on day 6. In day 6, something happened. Because then, chapter 2 recounts what happened. He said, God had made the trees, had made the fishes, had made everything. He brought it to mankind so that he would give those things names. But God said, no, it is not good for this man I have made to be on his own. So when I was preparing, I was praying, I was asking the Holy Spirit, help me understand this. Because I need to understand so that I can share it with my brothers and my sisters in church. And it was like, you know what? Making man like myself was making man to be like me. Mankind. To, to be able to, to be a community on his own. This is the understanding he gave me. To be able to be a community on his own. But you see, I am God. I am God. I am omnipotent. I, am, I, I can see all things. I can do all things. But I've placed man on earth. So me placing man on earth, man can be in a particular place at a particular time. I am God. We are in church here right now. Somebody is in church in Lagos. Somebody is in church in Sri Lanka. But God is still there. Do we get it? Am I making sense? God is everywhere at the same time. But Omega can only be in that church right now. Somebody else is sharing the word in Ghana somewhere. Somebody is in America preaching. I cannot be in all the places at the same time. So for, 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 for me, God, to multiply what I want to do, I have to bring somebody who is going to help for this work to be done. So in chapter 1, after he had, he had created man, he gave man the mandate. Be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue. And all that. Give man a mandate to execute. Anyway. So God now realized that it wasn't good for man to be alone. So he, he created a suitable helper. Somebody who can help him achieve what he intended. Amen? So God, after he had put them together, started a family. He started with Adam and with Eve as a family. Now, to create a family so that in the, the family will now create a community. The community becomes bigger and as they expand, the power and the mandate of God as well, what? Expands. So he created a new close family the nucleus family has an extended family. The extended family becomes a community, and it goes on and on and on. Families help us to, uh, to form our character. Families help us to, 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 uh, to uh, form our personalities. Families gives us identity. In Ghana, if I mention my name, my surname, of Fusu Asamoa, you know where I come from. Your name will tell where you come from. And I'm sure it's the same everywhere. Your surname can tell where you come from. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I, I, I only exist in that particular part of God. We are all what? Connected. Amen. The same it is when you become born again. When we become born again, God puts us in a family. It is not by mistake that you are in that church. It's not by mistake that you're here this morning. 
It's God's plan to put you in a family. For you to form your character, to have personality, to have identity. But this time, the character, the personality, the identity is on Jesus. He puts us together so that we can help each other. Remember, suitable helper. And what is it meant to do? The family is meant to take care of you. And that brings me to my point. Care. The C, I call it community. To connect. He brings us to connect. I work with, um, with um, three surgeons. And, um, you know, over the time, I've come to understand some things about nature. Because um, when I look at some of the trees and I see how God uses nature to teach us things, I begin to believe that God is amazing. There's a tree called the blackthorn tree. I don't know how many know that blackthorn. Blackthorn, right. Is normally used by farmers um, for hedging. All right? Now, that tree has these thorns on, on, on it, all right? And um, it connects with each other. You know, the, the branches so much connect. And the thorns are so feisty that if you try to take it down, it's going to do you harm. Because it's not easy to hold the tree. The thorns will fight back. Somehow. The black thorn is used as hedging because nothing can penetrate the black thorn. No animal can penetrate it. Even cutting the black thorn tree, by cutting one, it doesn't fall because it's connected. For all the heads to fall, you have to cut each one of them for it to fall. Just cutting one, pulling it out. By the time you take it out, you see all the stuff on your hands. And the boys are always complaining, we don't want to do this. No, 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 we don't do it in Blackthorn. And I'm like, we have to do it. <laughs> Connecting the Blackthorn teaches us how to connect. That together when we connect, like Chica shared in Ecclesiastes, when we connect, great things happen. It's a one will put to flight a thousand. But two will to put to flight what? Ten thousand. It's a where two or three are gathered, I am there. And if two shall agree on anything, it shall be what? Community. Community. The A in the care is affection. The family will love you. No matter how horrible you are, your family will still love you. And the same way it is with a church. With the groups, they are there to show you love, to show you affection, to be there for you. The birthdays, the barbecues, graduations, like Chica said, they will be there for you. They will show you love. Amen? They will show you love. The Bible says, Jesus said, it's a... To show love, we need to lay down our lives for one and another. He said, by love, people will know that you are my disciples. Because when they see you, they will see love. When they see you, they see you as one. When they see you, they see you as people who love to be together. To be together, sorry. 
We see what happened in Mark chapter 2. When I read the NIV, it said, there was this paralytic man with his friends. But four of them carried him. Now, it tells me that it wasn't only four friends he had. Because it said, with his friends. So, I'm sure as they carried him, if the four got tired, they changed. This four took him all the way to the roof. I remember when Jaya preached that. It was so powerful. To the roof and broke through the roof and lowered him to Jesus. Man, that was love. Sharing his burden. Carrying him all the way to Jesus. That is what we do as children of God. That is what we ought to do as children of God. And that is what Connect is there for you. To show you love. In Hebrews chapter 10, can you put on the screen for me please? 10, 24. It says, and let us consider how we may spare one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We should not cease sparing each other on to do good things. The R in care for me is being real. Because when you're in a family, you got to be real. You have to be vulnerable. You have to tell, I mean, let people know who you are. Share whatever you're going through with your family. You ask for help. We don't become the macho man like everything is okay when it's not okay. We need to be vulnerable. To tell our church friends, tell our group, tell our leaders what we are going through. And how we need help. And how they can help us. In James chapter 5 verse 16. If you can put it on the board, please. James 5 16. He says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And it goes on, and it said, if anyone is sick, call on the leadership of the church, and they will do what? Lay hands on you, and you shall be made whole. So we need to come and be connected, and let our connect know how and what we are going through. I know that some of us have been hurt, you know, past experiences, you know, when you are um, wherever you have come from at times, you know, things happen in the past. And because of that, you are a bit, you know, guarded. You don't want to open up. You don't want to share what is going on with your life or in your life. But the only way to have healing, to have a breakthrough, is to tell what you are going through. And the church... And your connect can help you. I saw this um, on YouTube. I happened to just trample on it. It's about penguins. How many of you know penguins? Yeah? (laughs) You know they leave, I mean, some of them live in the Arctic, right? Which is very, very cold, about 40, minus 40 degrees. So cold. But there's something strange about them. For them to be warm, they huddle. They come together and they huddle themselves in a group. And those in the center, as they get warm, they come out and those outer will go in and they keep huddling themselves, keep themselves warm. Nature that God is teaching us. How we need to spare each other on. How we need to encourage each other. Animals are doing it. And I believe we are able to do it. I've got your back. The E in care is to empower. To empower. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, it says, 
encourage each other daily, every day. Every day I check on you. Find out if you're good. I pray with you. You pray with me. Because look, we all have issues. I'll stand here and worship and lead and encourage you. But I've got my own issues. And I need somebody to stand with me and also what? Pray with me. And the only way that can happen is when I share with my brother or with my sister. And by so doing, we do what? We empower each other to do greatly. For the mandate that we have ahead of us. So to empower. Amen? And we go to Proverbs 27 verse 17, like um, my brother said, um, shared. He said, iron sharpeneth iron. Iron sharpeneth iron. But sharp things can cut at times, isn't it? Yeah. Knife is sharp. It can cut you at times. But you stop using it. Why? For the benefit of the knife. Because you need the knife to do other things. So when it cuts you, when you are using it next time, what do you do? Right? We don't stop using it. We don't stop using it. We don't stop connecting because that brother, that sister did that to me. We don't stop attending church because that brother, that sister did that to me. We don't stop. We keep going because we know that when we connect, great things happen. When we connect, we can take a whole nation. When we connect, anything we pray on will come to pass. Amen. Now, I want to show you an illustration. Uh, my volunteers, can you come up, please? Then I pray. Amen. Strong win, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, Femi, if you can join, please. Yeah. Oh, right, all right. One other person is coming. Um, so let's look at this illustration, right? So before, I want Carl to pull Malachi to himself. Yeah, try it. What happened? It was so easy, isn't it? It was so easy. All right, let's do it again. This time, I want you, you know, not that easy, but try to drag him. Come, let's do it again. Still, it's all right, isn't it? He was able to do it by himself. Now, let's link our hands. No, you don't link. Hold Malachi. Hold Malachi. And try to pull them. Try. Harder. Harder. That is how we have to look like. Thanks, guys. This is how we ought to be. That together, nothing can stop us. That together, we can do greatly. You saw them in different heights, isn't it? Right? I'm sure if they're on their own, their strength will not match up to the, when they are together. And as they're holding on together, there's encouragement. They'll be pulling, maybe Malachi is going that way, the other guy's, no, come, let, let's bring him back. Together, we can do great. Church, together, we can achieve the 15,000. Together, we can pray for the sick and they shall be healed. Together, we can pull in everything that the Lord has laid on our hands. Together, we'll be able to multiply. Together, we will subdue. Together, we will increase. Together, we can do much more than we can ever ask or think. Hallelujah. the song. I know we've played. <laughs> I'm just going to do that 
that line. Is that okay? Because it helps the feet. No enemy can hold you down. Because there's nobody. Sing me out, church. One hand. Because there's no. Come on, be upstanding. Come on, sing now. No enemy can hold you. Because there's nobody in you. One head, one head gets to. Cause there's no. We want to lift one more time, see now. Together. One head. On Christ we stand. Cause there's no. We take it one more time higher. Yeah. One head, cause nobody, no, yeah, cause there's nobody in the grave now. Now, this is the last illustration I have. The tallest tree in the world is called redwood. It can grow so tall to about 350 feet. But its root, its top roots, only goes down between 6 to 12 feet. And you ask yourself the question, how can so tall a tree have the top root to be just 12 feet? But do you know something? The red root roots connect to other red roots, redwood trees in the area. And as they connect, the storm will come. The fires will come. And they say that the roots nourishes itself, nourishes one and another. So the red root, as tall as it is, the only reason it stays that tall is because of the connection. Oh, you didn't understand that. I said the only reason it stays that tall is because it's connected to other trees in home.